What is going on, guys? Board Gamers Gaming here today to go over the All Out Predictions card. Um, as you can tell, my voice is a little, a little messed up right now, and that's simply because, well, I already recorded this video, and then, well, we had a little hindrance with the whole Moxley thing, and then I wanted to add something in. Then I wanted to talk about the Phoenix stuff, so all that stuff is now up for di up for discussion. So I'm recording this actually about five hours before I leave. I'm leaving around 5:36 a.m. Um, on Thursday morning. I will be editing this video and getting it out there for you guys, but. The first thing I want to touch on is the thumbnail for this. If the if you're looking at the thumbnail, you are going to see John Moxley in our thumbnail for the predictions video. I want to make it clear that John Moxley is not on the show. That is a thumbnail that I had designed prior to the Moxley news, and I did not go back and edit it that. So John Moxley is going to be in that thumbnail. I'm sorry if that is misleading to any of you. But it's 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 there. Um, next, let's start on the pre-show. The pre-show, a match I'm excited for is the 21 Casino Battle Royale. We determine one of the participants in the women's AW Championship picture. So far, we have Nyla Rose, Britt Baker, Allie, Brandy. Teal Piper, Iva Weiss, Jazz, Big Swole, Sadie Gibbs, and also Um, a lot of these names I could see being in a vic victorious. Um, Nyla clearly, Britt clearly, um, Allie clearly. Sadie Gibbs could be interesting. She's it's her first show, so maybe. Um, then Awesome Kong could always be a possibility. I don't think Teal Piper's gonna win. I don't think I believe she's gonna win. I don't think Jazz are gonna win. I think we surprised a big swole one. If you don't know her, she's Ariel Monroe from the May Young Classic. Um, I like what she could do in the ring. And, and that leaves 11 other spots to be open. So, I, I took this on myself and I'm gonna guess who might be in those 11 spots. Now, these might be way wrong. They might be horrible. Um, first name that came to mind, Tessa Blanchard, obviously, one of the most popular women in all of wrestling, that she could show up. Tolly's going to be on the show, so she could show up. Um, next, I have Taya Valkyrie. That's only because in one of the recent BTE videos, they had Taya do a, a little segment with um, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, where they where Taya was walking Marco Stunt while they were walking their dog. Um, so I could very easily see Taya Valkyrie being in the Battle Royale. Tino Dashwood, we all know she's gonna be in and around the scheme during Starcast, so I imagine she could find her way into the, the Battle Royale. Another name that I'm not really in not I, I I'm not really thinking that's gonna happen, but I just wanted to put it out there. Is Kira Hogan? I think Kira Hogan would fit very well into this match, and kind of be sort of something to look forward to. Um, you want this match to be something special? You put a somebody like a Kira Hogan in there, it'll be pretty good. Next, I have Bea Priestley. Um, we all know Bea Priestley is. If you didn't watch her her, her fight for the Fallen match. She's great. Be a priest is somebody that I look at as being a future world champion. Well, women's world champion. So, be a priestly. No complaints with her whatsoever. Next, I have Kylie Ray. She's not on the card anywhere. So, I imagine she's going to find her way onto the card one way or another. And that would have to be through the Casino Battle Royale. Next, I have Scarlet Bordeaux. I have her on the list simply because she's going to be in and around the area for StarCast. So, I imagine that they might be able to work out something where she is going to be in the Casino Battle Royale. I don't think she's going to have any major part, but I think she could find a way. Next, we got Shoko Nakajima. Um, 
she was one of the women from the the um the double or nothing the double or nothing um six way between the women um she's a name that's been around with AEW so I was I kind of threw her in there as you don't want to throw people that just have no chance I'm not gonna say oh Lita's gonna be in it no I'm just gonna throw names around I'm gonna throw names that are likely Shoko Nakajima is somebody that's already worked with AEW so I could see it happening um Leva Bates she signed it would make sense for her to be there and then Yuka Sakazaki um we haven't heard much about her since um her match with Riho but I'd like to see Yuka Sakazaki in this but that leaves the question who do I have as a winner in this match and my winner is going to be Bea Priestley like I said I could easily see her being the first AEW women's champion um Bea Priestley is just somebody that when you watch her on the ring she's just absolutely flawless but you can't praise Bea Priestley enough um I'm taking Bea Priestley in the casino battle royale Next, we also have another match that I'm pretty excited for. We got Private Party versus Angelico and Jack Evans. And I am taking Private Party. Let me hear me out. Um, Angelico and Jack Evans, they kind of they they're more known. Um, obviously, they were being on Lucha Underground and on all those shows, and then Private Party is more of a house. Like a, like a house show name, like House of Glory. Not many people know about it, so Private Party, somebody fresh to the fans. Not a lot of people have seen Private Party, um, but Private Party is, if you, if you didn't watch their, their um, stuff at um, Fighter Fest, or what, I think they fought, did they fight a double or nothing? No, they didn't. They were in, they were in the um, Battle Royale. But at Fighter Fest, they actually, they had a, that's a, a showcase of their talent. They both made it stars out of themselves. Mark Quinn and Isaiah Cassidy. Both of those guys look phenomenal. I'm taking private party guys. I expect them to be one of the teams that are kind of like more hyped up for AEW. But along the road, we're going to see these guys start to pick up momentum and start to be one of the, the, the flag bearers to the division. That's what I expect out of the private party. Um, I'm... I'm excited for him. I'm excited to see what the private party can do. And in the main show, we're going to start off with Riho versus Hikaru Shida. Last time we seen both of these women, they both picked up victories. Um, Riho, you, you've seen my Double or Nothing reviews. You've seen my, my Fight for the Fallen reviews. Every time I talk about Riho, I can't praise her enough. Somebody that I didn't... I, was, I didn't have much hope in Riho. I was like... Eh, they said, was she? She's, what, 19? Some super young, and she's been wrestling for, like, 16 years. It was, it was ridiculous. She's been wrestling basically her whole life. It was ridiculous. And when you watch her in the ring, she has an edge to her. She has the spice to her. She kind of reminds me a little of a Kyrie Sane, but she's go, go, go all the time. Rio is absolutely one of my favorites in the AEW women's division. And that's why I'm going to have to take Riho to beat Hikaru Shida. Even though Hikaru Shida had a, fair, a very good performance in the women's um, six-way ta six, six tag team match. That's what it was. Um, at Double or Nothing, Hikaru Shida, she, she can eat a loss. Hikaru Shida, nobody's going to question Hikaru Shida starts to become something special because we all know Hikaru Shida has it in her. Riho, she's really picking up momentum. I really expect her to be hitting her strides by the time TV starts. I really expect Riho to be one of those fresh faces to come in and be the, the life of the crowd and really get people behind her. I really like what Riho can do. There I go again, praising Riho. What do you want? What do you want from me? What do you want? I told you I'm going to praise Riho, man. Um, next, we have a match that also got added. So this is also one of the reasons why I am refilming this video, and it is Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt versus SCU. We are the best. SCU, the pride of the West. 
SCU born and raised. SCU from the Golden State. SCU. I'll be meeting them guys on Friday. Um, going into this, I, I really, I can't praise Jungle Boy enough. Jungle Boy's been absolutely one of my favorite parts to the the whole AEW so far. One of my favorite acts. I love Jungle Boy. Can't say enough about Jungle Boy. Um, Luchasaurus, he's been very impressive. His last showing was actually a star-making performance for him, where he showed off his athleticism. Um, and then obviously Marco Stunt was somebody I raved about at All In. That he really shocked me during his showcase at All In. Um, so, three guys that I've already praised up and down versus SCU, one of the most praised tag teams that you can possibly praise. Those guys, absolute stars. Um, but for this match, I am going to have SCU win because SCU really hasn't seen much so far on all elite um, programming. So I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have to say SCU, man. I'm gonna have to say SCU. Um, this is the first time that Marco Stunt is added into Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy's act on a trios match. So for now, I'm gonna say SCU is gonna win. Next, we have Darby Allen versus Jimmy Havoc versus Joey Janela in a Crackle Barrel Clash. I don't know what a Crackle Barrel Clash is, but I assume it's some sort of hardcore-ish match. Um, if that's the case, then everybody wins here. Fans win, Janela get wins, Havoc win, everybody wins. Because this match is going to put everybody over. Now... When I look at the names in this match, I'm thinking of who is most likely to win this. Um, clearly, you got Joey Janela, a fan favorite. Everybody loves Joey Janela because he wrestles the hardcore style kind of matches. He can wrestle regular matches as well and make them pretty entertaining. Joey Janela is pretty good. Then you got the Jimmy Havoc, very similar situation to a Joey Janela. Somebody that AEW seems to like is Jimmy Havoc. And then you got Darby Allen. Darby Allen went the time limit with Cody Rhodes. Darby Allen had a phenomenal showcase of his athleticism. I'm going to have to take Darby Allen. Darby Allen is, he's showcased a lot so far in the little amount of time he's had. He has had two shows, he's showcased a lot. This man has made a start of himself out of two terms. I've said it, I said it on, on the first night of, in Fighter Fest, I was like, this man is going to make a start of himself tonight. He made a start of himself. Continued it at Fight for the Fallen. What do you want me to say? Darby Allen is going to end up winning this match. He is the guy. I'm telling you, he is the guy that they have the most faith in. You don't put a guy like Darby Allen up against Cody Rhodes. Let it go 20 minutes and just drop the ball and say, you know what? He'll lose to he'll lose to Jimmy Havoc next, next show. No, that's just... Darby Allen's going to be somebody that they look to carry this hardcore division. I really feel it. And I expect Darby Allen to be built up so where he finally gets a rematch against Cody and he can finally defeat Cody. I expect that to be the case. This is going to be a good match either way. But I'm going to take Darby Allen, even though I'm a Joey Janela guy. I'm getting, I'm meeting Joey Janela. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm a Jimmy Havoc guy too. But... I'm going to have to take Darby Allen in the match. I'm sorry. Next, we have the best friends versus the Dark Order. Winner gets the first round by in the AEW World Tag Team Championship Tournament. And this is a match I'm excited for. You got the best friends, a very over act. Everybody loves them. You got to wait for the hug. It's great. Chucky T and Trent. Bruh. Bruh. You got to love those guys. Um... But then you got the Dark Order. You got Stu Grayson and Evil Uno. Both these guys have been some... They, and not a lot of people knew about them, but what I've seen from them so far, I've been impressed. These are two guys that clearly know what they're doing. They're, they have a very big... They have a, a very good size distinction. You got Stu Grayson, more of the skinnies, gonna pound and ground you. And then you got... Evil Uno, he's going to throw his weight around at you. I really like that. Um, it's a really old-fashioned heel tag team. 
I really like the Dark Order. I really think that they are going to end up winning this match. And I do expect them to win. Because I can easily see it being a story where if the best friends end up becoming the tag team champions, they can run through and finally, at the end, they can come back and they can beat the Dark Order finally to conclude the tournament. I could see it happening. Next, we have Pac versus Kenny Omega. Now, this is a match that they just they just put together. It was because of the staff infection to Moxley's elbow. Um, I was looking forward to the Moxley and Kenny match. I was saying that match could be something very special. But we added Pac. This is going to be a better match. You got Kenny Omega, great work, great guy. You got Pac, great work, great guy. You put those guys in the same ring, you're going to get something special. I don't know if it's going to be the match of the night, but this is definitely going to be a very good match at the end of the night. But with that being said, I would really love to sit here and tell you that Kenny Omega is going to win. Because I love Kenny Omega. We already know that. I can't rave enough about Kenny Omega. If you just go watch one of my, one of my tweets or... Anything regarding Kenny Omega, I've defended that man multiple times. And, uh, what, what is this light oh, right here? Huh. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but I've defended Kenny Omega multiple, multiple times. And that's one guy I have a lot of faith in. But you don't bring a guy like Pac in and have him lose his first night on the show. Pac's gonna win. Kenny can eat a loss, unfortunately. Kenny is one of those guys that, at the end of the night, a loss doesn't do much to him because Kenny Omega is Kenny freaking Omega. Once he gets on his roll, there's the most... It can be one of the most believable things you'll ever see. Kenny Omega is an absolute stud when it comes to anything and everything professional wrestling. So, I, I think Pac can, can get the win here. Um, next, we got Cody with an unknown special guest with... Reverse Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard. Now, I don't know who Cody's guest is going to be. I'm assuming it's not going to be the Brandys or the MJFs. Maybe it's going to be Dustin. I don't I, I don't think it will be. Maybe it's going to be Arn Anderson. A name that I was looking at was maybe CM Punk, but that wouldn't make much sense because you wouldn't want that here. You'd want that at the end of the show if he is going to come onto the show, which is very unlikely, but it could still happen. Um, I'm going to say he comes out, I, I really don't know who's going to come out. I really can't come up with an answer. I really, I really don't know. Um, you know what? I'll say, I'll say, um, he's going to come out with, I, yeah, I, I can't even make a prediction. I can't even make, I don't think it's going to be Arn Anderson. A lot of people are saying Arn Anderson. I can't see it. Um, if it is, great. But that doesn't change the outcome of my match in either way. The guy I have winning the match is Sean Spears. He, it's his first big match. It's against Cody. Cody's been known to, to let a couple losses. He, he's okay with a couple losses. He, he, Sean Spears is going to be a big heel in this business. And Sean Spears is going to end up beating Cody Rhodes this coming Saturday night. Next, we have the Lucha Brothers versus the Young Bucks. And a match. Thing I want to touch on before I talk about the Escal Escalera de la Muerte is Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix had a very big scare a couple nights ago. I believe it was Friday night, and I'm getting ready to. I'm, I'm probably. I think I was playing games. I think I was playing a Madden. We get the news that Moxley's out, and I, I'm. I immediately am like, oh, that's a big loss. That's a big loss. Who's going to replace him? They say Pac. I'm like, oh, great. And then I start messaging around, thinking, what, seeing what everybody's feeling about it. And then we get the news that Ray Phoenix broke his leg. And this was a report that came in, and everybody was getting antsy at this point. Everybody was like, all outs in jeopardy. This show's cursed. It's going to be bad. You can't lose Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix did not break his leg. And thanks to Taya Valkyrie, she said there was no break, and he's fine. He ended up wrestling one more match, to my knowledge. I don't know if he didn't, if he canceled out or not, but I believe he wrestled. Um, he's going to be at All Out. Ray Phoenix did not cancel. 
Ray Phoenix is going to be at the show. Ray Phoenix is going to be in the Escalera de la Muerte match for the AAA Tag Team titles against the Young Bucks. Now, this really made me think. I was like, I don't know how bad his injury is. This could be very, this could easily be something where it's like the Tommaso Ciampa, where he's going to do the last match, even though his neck was messed up, just so he can finally get over Gargano. This might be something where Ray Phoenix, he knows that this match is big. He's going to go do it. He's going to go deliver, but then he's going to go away for a while. He's going to need surgery. He's going to need rest. I don't know. I don't know how, what kind of condition his legs in. I really don't. Um, and then I was thinking maybe this is going to be a moment where they have to drop it to the Young Bucks. Because you don't want the AAA tag titles being held basically placeholders for the Lucha Bros until Ray Phoenix comes back. I mean, you could bring in Laredo Kid if you wanted to, but it really wouldn't be the same. Um, but luckily for them, Ray Phoenix will be in this match. And as of right now, I'm still taking the Lucha Brothers for this match. And another winner for this match is going to be the fans. It's going to be the fans, man. You already know it's going to be the fans. You know why it's going to be the fans? Because we got a Lucha Bros Young Bucks, Young Bucks match in a Stairway to Hell match. Yeah. That makes a whole lot of sense on how that's going to be a horrible match. Please explain. It's probably going to be match of the year right there. Next, we have Adam Page versus Chris Jericho for the AEW Inaugural Championship match. Now, in my other prediction video, I made a bold prediction that Chris Jericho was going to win. And you want to know what? Each day, we get closer and closer to All Out. The more I think is Hangman. Hangman's going to win. Hangman. Hangman must win. Hangman. It's got to be Hangman. I don't know what it is. I don't... It's it's not the fact that you don't want a WWE champion being the, the first AEW champion. That's not the fact. That would actually be better because you get you get the the more you get you get headlines all over the place. First AEW champion is former world champion for their rival WWE. That's headlines. Or you could get Hangman. And I really feel like Hangman's gonna be. I don't know what it is. Something about me. It's not... Nothing about this is analytical. This is a gut feeling. This is a gut feeling. I'm taking Hangman. I don't know. I don't know. But I think Hangman is going to be the one raising his hand at the end of the night. Until a certain... Best in the world. I'm just kidding. If CM Punk returns, great. If not, we shouldn't get our hopes up too much. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys go follow the Instagram to see my my All Out Weekend, StarCast Weekend pictures and stuff. I'm going to be starting that up tomorrow at the Goon Gamer YT. And then you got the Twitter at Gamers Goon YT. So make sure you guys go watch my social media pages over there. See, see what I'm doing. See if I'm getting pictures with my boy Sammy Guevara Friday. Because I know I will be because I just bought tickets today. Anyway, see you guys next time.